tree is out do they do they post the entire tree no way no way no way no okay all right hello friends how's it going we are just two days away from the 3.17 release and it's really really exciting as you saw from the little intro clip there they just dropped the atlas passive tree yesterday and it was overwhelming. I was not ready for it at all. We had to have a big intermission in the middle of our Arc Witch leveling testing, which is looking really, really good. If you're interested in that, video will be coming tonight. But yeah, we took a couple hours yesterday on stream, read through all of the different passives. Honestly, I actually just ignored the tree entirely, and we'll be getting into that in a second. There are some really, really exciting things and really fun little strategies that I wanna put together, but the very, very number one thing that I wanna emphasize don't stress about it. It's no big deal. Definitely do your research and find the things that look exciting to you. You can poke around, play around on the, on the skill tree planner, but it's really, really not a big deal. It's going to be incredibly trivial to respect those points. Honestly, just go for the stuff that's fun for you. Thing about Path of Exile is it is really, really easy to earn basic currency and orbs of unmaking. You're going to be able to purchase those for two regrets each. Really the best thing that I strongly recommend doing, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm not even looking at the tree. I've opened it up. I've looked at like where the general ideas of where things are and like what I want to, you know, kind of go for that seems simple, but that's about it. I am not min-maxing any strategy. I'm not planning out my 128 points. I end every single league with multiple hundreds of regrets in my stash. I don't stress about moving things around. I actually find that stressing about all that type of stuff really detracts from the fun that I have from playing this game. So first of all, I just want to show you all how easy it's going to be to move those points around. Really take that stress off your shoulders and look at the passive tree as something that is just fun and exciting, but also very dynamic, not locked in. And you can kind of just go for what's fun. And then I just wanted to show you two or three different things that I'm excited about doing, but I'm not even planning out exactly how I'm going to approach that. I just want to hit maps, get some points, put them in and just have fun going into the maps. So let me show you a couple things here. First of all, the absolute number one thing that I want to show y'all is how easy it is to change those points around. So Chris said that there's going to be a vendor recipe for two regret orbs to one orb of unmaking. And regret orbs are actually really, really easy to just get and not worry about. The number one thing to remember is we have these vendors that will allow you to exchange currency into regret orbs. So we can see that a regret is two orbs of scouring. We can see a scour is four orbs of chance, which means that every eight orbs of chance equals one regret orb. So 16 chances is one orb of unmaking. You can just pick up those chance orbs. And if, if orbs of unmaking are worth a couple chaos, it could actually be worth just doing that conversion. Now there will be, you know, automated arbitrage <laughs> to say the least going on, but that is just a thing that you might want to look into for that, that value and that exchange there. Do not stress where you're putting the points early on. Just try to go for the things that are very, very close to where you are that look really, really exciting. And you can just move those points around later. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Those happy little mistakes may actually turn out finding some fun little strategies that other people haven't thought about. And some of my best builds and my best discoveries in this game are by kind of going off of the beaten path and just doing something a little bit weird because I know that I can always craft new items, move my passive points around, do different stuff that I can always just go into the known good stuff later. And I'm actually going to be embodying that with the league starter that I play, and I hope you can join me on that journey. But let's get into a couple of the strategies and weird combos that I'm really excited about. So number one in the things that jump out to me that I think are gonna be slept on a little bit, and I haven't been looking at anyone else's videos or anything, I just kinda wanna go in this messy with my own ideas, is betrayal. Now, betrayal usually does take a while to mature in the league, to really get that value for selling June slams or anything like that. But in terms of how you were able to craft your own items, get 30% quality, get those white sockets, all of that really, really nice stuff. I look at betrayal and additionally harvest as great ways to not having to dip into the market, be a little bit more solo cell phone friendly and put together your gear and your character in a really, really nice way. Beyond everywhere, being able to trivially double beyond every single map that you run, more basic currency items, more quantum items, et cetera, et cetera. I can only imagine everyone is really, really excited about this. If you like to juice your maps, Beyond is the way to go. I found that while Blight is very profitable, it's not outstripping the other strategies that you can do in the game by enough to be worth a little bit of the hassle of doing it. I do like Blight, but especially Blighted maps, unless you're using like three of the speed up oils, just feels kind of tedious and boring. But, you know, it's not boring. 
really, really good rewards. They're, I believe, doubling or tripling the amount of value that quantity gives you on Ravage Blight maps. And now we are able to have more than one Blight encounter on a single map, which dramatically changes the amount of value that you get for putting Blight on your maps. So I think Blight looks really, really cool. Breach. Nothing that I see in Breach excites me. Good for juicing your maps. Early League, the uniques that you get from Breach bosses can be worth a lot. The new Breach monster that drops things from all the different Breach Lords seems like it's just objectively worse than Chayula. It can drop something from even the bad ones, right? I don't really care to get something from Ash, right? So this, while it sounds cool, unless there's new uniques or anything like that from that Breach Lord, I've been kind of cold on Breach for a while. And especially without the 10 guaranteed rare packs of monsters from the old 3.14, I'm not really feeling Breach unless you're just looking to juice that quant in your maps. Delirium is Delirium. Delve is still Delve. I don't see anything particularly new here. The one exciting thing to me is Packed with Energy. I actually use this in the Endless Delirium race to juice my maps basically to go faster, do more damage, and be tankier in Hardcore Solo Cell Found. And this is a thing that now, you know, if you use if you use like a Sulfite Scarab, you're guaranteed to get three Sulfite veins or chests in every single map. That's just really, really good for making all of your maps stronger when you just toss that Scarab in. That could be a fun way to juice your map and juice your character as you're going through the map. Elder Slayer stuff, if you want to get Conqueror stuff, looks fine. I love Essences. If you've seen any of my Path of Profit or Exalt per Week challenges, you know that Essence is always old trusty that I like to go back to. I am really, really excited that essences are gonna be right here. I am almost definitely gonna make a beeline for prolific essence just so I can get that right away, get an essence in every single map that I get. And that's just a great way to start crafting your own gear. Or if you wanna sell them, start showing up your supply of essences really, really quickly. Expedition is best pedition. I'm doing it. I love expedition. I made 90 exalts in one day in four hours of expedition last league. Everything here looks really, really good. If you love Expedition, do it. <laughs> Harby. Harby looks really, really good. The most exciting thing about this is the new node here, Unspeakable Offense. Harbingers have more monsters, and it's faster. To me, the most annoying thing about Harbingers is sometimes it can take really, really long, and then you just do all of that for, like, four Chaos Shards, and it's like, was that really worth my time? However, with 60% increased cooldown recovery rate and 60% more minions, that's just a double win. I think that that is the most exciting thing about bringing Harbinger back into being more exciting instead of just like a, a side hustle for more juice on your maps. The Harvest stuff is all fine. Looks really, really good. To me, Heist is the best diced. <laughs> Heist is incredible, especially early league. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I have multiple friends that make multiple mirrors the first couple weeks of every single league doing Heist. If you absolutely hate Heist and you're not interested in easy currency, Easy, really, really good synthesized items, really good replicas, alternate quality gems, all of the great stuff that you get from Heist. That's okay. Don't let me twist your arm. But I'm going to be heisting, and I'm going to be making really, really good currency. Incursion looks fine. Nothing in here is super exciting to me. In Solo Cell Found, this will be really, really good. We will get more base rare types that have those Incursion modifiers, those really, really good ones. Kirax stuff, I don't know. It looks crazy. Uh, looks great. <laughs> Really exciting. This is new stuff. I can't wait to see the value of the stuff that he gives you. But until we really see what those things are, what those different types of scattering reports end up giving us, you know, jury's out until we see it. But I am really excited about this. Labyrinth, let's go. There's actually a reason to run Trials of Ascendancy now. If Gift of the Goddesses are going for, you know, 30, 60, 80 chaos again for the lab runners that really want to buy that stuff, Definitely be on the lookout for that if you want that as like a nice little side hustle and you don't hate running trials. Legion is looking really, really good. Emblematic with the little extra small nodes down here says that Timeless Splinters have a 1% chance to drop as a full emblem. That is actually just doubling the value of doing Legion and what you can get from those emblems. That's really, really exciting to me. Since I'm going to be league starting a build that is one of the best Legion farmers in the entire game, I'm very, very excited about this. The map boss and regular map stuff is really, really cool to me, especially if you just like running a lot of maps. One of the coolest things about all of this stuff here is you don't have to do some min-maxed, juiced strategy. You can just choose what you like doing. And even if that is just as basic as, I like running maps, nothing more, nothing less, you can invest into the map boss and regular map stuff just to get more drops, more good stuff, just killing those map bosses, which is awesome. However you like to play is enabled, Really just go out there and have fun. Metamorphs are really, really cool. I don't know a lot about them. I know they're very, very rewarding. 
If you like them, you like them. I'm sure that this one has been called out by a lot of folks. It's really, really exciting. Rare monsters have 1% chance to drop additional currency item, additional jewelry items, and you can duplicate three of them. So you combine that with Beyond, Nemesis, all that really, really cool stuff. Tons of rare monsters duplicated all over the place. I think we are going to be finding the juiciest maps of all time. This is just really, really cool. I'm going to take it if I can, just for like the fun of seeing double monsters all over the place. Ritual actually looks decent now. I'm a little bit of a ritual hater, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. But with being able to get blood-filled vessels to just drop naturally and combining that with all of the really, really decent stuff that we already have, that might be enough to make it worth just, hey, I got a blood-filled vessel, tossing it in. Ritual is now giving me good value whenever I find it. All right, and now we come to my number one favorite thing that I am so excited about. Rogue Exiles, you say? Yes. Why is that? Wild Rogue Exiles have a 50% chance to contain re additional rewards. The we have a 30% chance to contain an additional Rogue Exile. And then we combine that with what? Rogue Exiles have a 100% chance to be possessed by a tormented spirit. Eh, really tormented spirits? Is that is that really interesting? Then we combine that with Ruckus. We're bringing the Rogue Exile Ruckus. 8% chance to contain 20 additional Rogue Exiles. And then 30% chance for an additional on top of that. And then hold. And then we combine it with 20, 40, 60, 90% more quantity. And then we combine that with 60% increased quantity and 30% more quantity. So all of the quant that you have is then multiplied by a 30% more multiplier. This is, this is the key word right here. So imagine this, you have 20 rogue exiles, that then is 23 rogue exiles, and then you have a chance to boost that up. So we have 30 rogue exiles that already have boosted quantity, and then they are all possessed by tormented spirits. And then all of those rogue exiles that are possessed have a very, very high extra quantity from those drops. I'm sure a lot of people have pointed this out, but this is just going to be bonkers. The unrelenting torment ruckus combination is going to be so, so fun, and I can't wait. So when I saw that, that is just what immediately jumped out to me as my number one thing that it might not even be the best strategy or anything, but I am so excited to do this. I love killing a bunch of monsters and getting really nice loot explosions. That's, that's that's one of the best things about Path of Exile, at least for me. <laughs> and even if this is kind of lower value than min-maxing certain strategies, I think it's just going to be so fun and hilarious to see all these rogue exiles that are possessed and and just blowing up in, a, in, in loot explosions. Scarabs, these are really, really good. 10% chance to not consume scarabs. This just means you have 10% more scarabs. That's really, really nice. And then 4% chance for unique bosses, not unique map bosses, any unique boss, beyond bosses, invasion bosses, really, really cool stuff like that. That just has the chance to rain scarabs, and that's really, really exciting. More better sextants, great. Uh, shrine stuff is really, really cool. 75% increased duration of shrines. So lots of shrines, increased duration, and increased effect. If we combine that with the gull, 75% increased effect as well, as well as 50% increased duration. Well, you're running around super, super strong. The Gull might just actually be best in slot if you go into the Shrine stuff and be on the lookout for that. That's going to be really, really fun for a lot of folks. Strong boxes. Strong boxes are really, really good. I like the idea of this operative strong box. My assumption here is that you're probably just going to get veiled items to drop, which is really, really cool. Strong boxes right now are divine printers. And with all of these strong box nodes, you're probably just going to find a lot of divines because of that corrupted modifier here. They're bringing back 1.5% chance for a synthesis map to drop depending on the value of how expensive a Cortex is, especially how much those synthesis maps sell for, definitely be on the lookout for that. It's just nice nodes to take if you're in that area for bonus money, or if you like running synthesized maps, is pretty fun. I'm not going to speak too much on the Eater of Worlds or Searing Exarch stuff. Jury's out for me. If you want to farm the endgame bosses, I assume that these are the nodes that you take. This is the exact same stuff that we have right now. More Watcher's Eyes, more Guardian Maps, etc. I actually use this to juice up a lot of currency early league. Do not sleep on these, especially Remnants of the Past and Guardian's Aid. At least right now, and perhaps in 3.17, you can sell Shaper and Elder Guardian Maps for between 15 and 25 chaos, depending on the demand. But the past few leagues, I've made dozens of exalts just selling those maps. The Torment stuff is, to me, kind of boring, but combined, as I said before, with that Ruckus is going to be really, really fun. 
Unique maps have plus two to monster level. This is pretty exciting. I think one of the most exciting things here is you can run Coward's Trial. And early on, you can get eye level 86 base types very, very early. Vol side areas, we get more alluring vol side areas. So you get those mortal fragments. And farming at Ziri might actually be worth a good amount now so you, since you can directly get its Ziri's reflection from her. Plus two to monster level in the Maven's Crucible. Uh, we're going to have an uber feared now, <laughs> which is going to be some pretty fun boss killing stuff. And just more splinters, more orbs of conflict, stuff like that is going to be really, really nice. And then a bunch of nodes for a bunch of more maps, which is always really good. So as I said, I haven't looked really, really closely at this. You know, I've said generally something like, hey, where is Betrayal? Seeing that Betrayal's over here. Okay, that's highlighted. Very, very nice. Where is, where is Harvest? You know, okay, there's where the harvest stuff is. If I care about that, that's the path that I would go. Where's essence, which is one of the number one things that I'm excited about. All right, there that is. And then where is ruckus? All right, ruckus is up there. It actually feels like they knew. <laughs> Exiled will right here and unrelenting torment are right next to each other. <laughs> and, Ruck and ruckus is right there. So this is definitely my go-to. That is the exciting thing that I am very, very much looking forward to. Hopefully that was enough to just give you some ideas release some stress off your shoulders, and just get you excited about Friday. Don't worry about how flexible this stuff is. Don't worry about trying to min-max a very, very specific strategy. Just have a general idea about what looks fun, what you want to do. Really, basically anything in Path of Exile is profitable. It really is. Just playing the game gets you currency. Find the stuff that you're excited about and do that. The number one way to make currency in Path of Exile is making sure you're enjoying the content that you're doing. You will inherently do it more and you will enjoy it and you won't regret the time that you spend doing that. I have to get back to working on my Arc Witch League Starter proposal. <laughs> it is not a blanket recommendation, but it's what I'm going to be league starting and I want to share that journey with you all. So definitely get subscribed and stay tuned for that. I am so excited and I can't wait for Friday. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.